Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. For those of us who knew him before he was sadly involved in a space whale massacre, Thrawn was a symbol of hope for the Empire. A man so brilliant and analytical that he was able to cut through the bureaucracy and xenophobia of the Empire and reach a position of command. With none other than the Emperor's blessing. And through his actions, Thrawn has shown that not only is he an extremely brilliant individual, but he's also a rationally compassionate man. To me, Thrawn was the perfect example of a good Imperial, something that seemed to be missing from the original films. And he was loved by fans, so much so that even George Lucas took notice. It was said that he was inspired to do the prequel series when he saw just how popular Timothy Zahn's Thrawn trilogy had gotten. So today we're going to be honoring the alien Imperial who is so talented he might as well just be a human with blue paint on his face by looking at 10 of his character traits that made him one of the best officers in the Empire. If Thrawn had one weakness, it was his intolerance for politics, bureaucracy, and kissing ass. Political maneuvering was chaotic, self-serving, manipulative, and ultimately caused the Empire more harm than good. And that's not what Thrawn was all about. But it was something that most ordinary Imperial officers had to go through in order to really get to a position of power. Luckily for the Empire, Thrawn had a very special sponsor in the Emperor, which meant that he could rise above the nonsense while still being himself. Thrawn was a very independent individual. He didn't always accept Imperial military doctrine or even the kind of equipment he was given to use for a mission. He didn't care who he offended, he would simply make his own changes to a plan or in the case of the TIE Defender, create his own new starship. Being tasked with hunting down the elusive Phoenix Squadron, Thrawn immediately realized that the Empire's main TIE fighter was inadequate for the job. The TIE in space superior craft was under-armored, under-armed, lacked a hyperdrive, and it wasn't even all that fast of a ship anymore now that the Rebels had the A-Wing. Most Imperial officers would have just kept their heads down and continued losing to the Rebels until they were demoted or strangled to death by Darth Vader. Thrawn quickly took initiative, noted all the problems with the TIE Fighter, and improved on its design. And the result was the TIE Defender, and it was so well designed it's almost as if Thrawn had seen Generation Tech's own 10 flaws with TIE Fighter's video. Hashtag shameless plug. While the original TIE Fighter only had two cannons, the TIE Defender had eight heavy laser cannons, a torpedo launcher, and even a tractor beam. The Defender also had shielding and hyperdrive. In preliminary tests against Rebellion ships, the TIE Defender was extraordinarily successful, winning dogfights even when severely outnumbered. When Darth Vader flew the TIE Defender for the first time, he was extremely impressed by its performance. He even compared it favorably to his own TIE Advanced Fighter, which he had flown over Yavin 4. Now, the main problem with the TIE Defender was it was simply too expensive to deploy across the entire Empire. So the best Thrawn could do was outfit his own special rubble hunting task force with this new ship. Thrawn understood that the Empire had created the TIE Fighter as a cheap patrol craft to maintain peace in the galaxy. It functioned very well against civilian crafts and freighters, but it just wasn't adequate enough against rebellion fighters. The TIE Defender is just one example of Thrawn not selling for the tools available to him. Both in canon and in Legends, he would routinely come up with new gadgets and devices. Sometimes he would even employ animals like the Yisla Miri. For Thrawn, procedure and protocol came second after function. The TIE Defender, as we mentioned before, was expensive. We also mentioned how Thrawn wasn't really that good at politics, which meant it was kind of hard for him to secure the proper funding for his project. At the time, a huge amount of Imperial resources were being dedicated to Project Stardust, otherwise known as the Death Star Project. Although the project was supposed to be classified, the huge amount of resources and slaves it was consuming meant it was relatively easy to figure out what was going on. Thrawn disapproved of the Death Star plan. As a matter of fact, before accepting service with the Empire, he made the Emperor promise that the weapon would never be used against his people, the Chiss. The Emperor was like, sure. On more practical terms, because after all the Chiss was nothing but rational, he thought the project was a waste of resources and time. Thrawn despised vanity and ego-driven projects, which the Death Star obviously was. Thrawn thought that the resources would have better been used to create a fleet of Star Destroyers or maybe a fleet of starfighters like the TIE Defender. The Empire was a vast place and more ships meant more mobility and coverage. Plus, tactically speaking, the Death Star consolidated too much of the Empire's resources making it a prime target for the Rebellion. Even Darth Vader agreed with Thrawn's assessment of the situation. Unfortunately for the Empire, the Emperor didn't listen to anyone. Sometimes geniuses don't have any time for regular folks like you and me, but Thrawn was different. 
He truly sought to better the Empire and make the officers and enlisted men and women around him better. This wasn't just out of compassion, though. It made sense from a rational chess point of view. Why wouldn't a commander make his men and women much more adequate at doing their job, especially when they have to go into battle together? So whether it was Captain Gilad Pelion, Cadet Eli Vanto, or Commander Pharaoh, if you were under the command of Thrawn and were humble enough to learn from the man, he would bring you to your full potential. If there was time before a battle, Thrawn would sometimes even walk his crew through his thought process, that way they would better understand how he thought. Sometimes he would even quiz his officers and ask them what they would do in a situation. He had trained his crew to become an extension of himself. That way, during the battle, he could look at the overall strategy without worrying about his crew members. Thrawn also encouraged questions and new ideas from his crew. He was open to discussion when the situation allowed it. Thrawn also showed his crew that he wasn't above learning from them as well. He didn't really have time to develop an ego and was always learning from everything around him. It was these traits that made Thrawn an excellent officer to serve under. When Vader's 501st was stationed on the Chimera, the commander of the Stormtrooper Corps noticed how forgiving Thrawn seemed to be around his men. It seemed strange to the Stormtrooper that Thrawn didn't punish his crew whenever they failed the mission, especially if it wasn't their fault. The Stormtrooper Corps was used to seeing Darth Vader execute individuals who failed all the time, even if it wasn't their fault. Thrawn was an extremely rational and fair man. He understood that sometimes failure wasn't the fault of his men, and as long as they tried their best, he wasn't really all that angry. He ever did not tolerate fools, bullies, or arrogant individuals under his command. Whether it was commanding a small combat team on the ground or a giant fleet up in space, Thrawn was one of the best commanders the galaxy had ever seen. We're just going to forget about all those whale shenanigans that happened in Rebels and look at Thrawn's career of just making other people look foolish. When Thrawn was given a mission by the Chiss to infiltrate the Empire, he was able to lure an Imperial ship to a small planet in wild space. When the Empire sent a small ground team to go find Thrawn, he was able to completely run circles around them. The first thing Thrawn did was take down a V-Wing fighter with a monofilament line, which I'm guessing is the Star Wars equivalent of tying a rope across two trees in the middle of the road and snagging a motorcyclist, which is not only extremely dangerous and messed up, but potentially manslaughter, so, so don't do that. Anyway, after Thrawn brought down the V-Wing, he stole the pilot's gear and planted some berries in the pilot's flight suit. You see, Thrawn knew that the Empire would return for the pilot's body and then bring that along with the berries back to the base. Now, these berries happened to be very attractive for the local wildlife, and what Thrawn did was take several small animals, strap bombs to them, and then set them loose in the camp, creating complete chaos. Thrawn's animal suicide bomber squad did its job and distracted the Imperial troops long enough for him to sneak onto an Imperial shuttle and get off the planet. When he finally let the Imperials catch him, they were so impressed by what he did, they didn't immediately kill him. Instead, they sent him to Palpatine. Most of us would not survive that situation. I know I wouldn't. I'd probably get too focused on putting little bombs on the animals. It just seems kind of fun. Thrawn's strategic genius was incredibly impressive, but it wasn't just the result of his experience and his intelligence. You see, Thrawn had an extremely analytical mind that could gather information from almost nothing. Before battles, Thrawn would not only analyze the enemy, but he would also analyze his own team, especially if he was working with new individuals. When fighting with Anakin for the first time, Thrawn used his knowledge of the Jedi and also closely observed how Anakin reacted to different situations to make the most out of his ally. Whenever Thrawn encountered a new enemy, he would oftentimes use TIE fighters to probe the enemy's defenses to see how they would react. Thrawn was also an avid consumer of art and history. He had a huge collection of artifacts and paintings in his office, which he used to better understand the cultures that made it. When hunting the rebels, Thrawn used pieces of Sabine's graffiti in order to better understand how they operated. While this might seem like eccentric behavior to most people, Thrawn was actually able to learn a lot from the artwork of different cultures. He was able to understand their temperament. He was able to see whether they were more prone to violence or diplomacy. The Chiss were oftentimes seen as a very cold and distant race, and Thrawn was not all that different. On the surface, he rarely let other people see him get emotional, and even Jedi like Anakin weren't able to sense what was going on inside of him using the Force. Perhaps Thrawn was good at shielding his feelings. Perhaps he was so disciplined that he never really had any feelings. Whatever the case, Thrawn never let his emotions get in the way of his decision making. He was able to make tough choices like sacrificing a few TIE fighter pilots to find out the weakness of an enemy ship, therefore saving more lives during the actual attack. Yet at the same time, his crew knew that Thrawn would never needlessly throw away their lives. In a way, Thrawn was like a Jedi, but more goal-oriented and less focused on kidnapping Force-sensitive babies. 
Unlike most high-ranking Imperial officers, Thrawn did not leave a wake of destruction behind him as he climbed the ranks. In the Imperial Academy, Thrawn was routinely bullied by instructors and other cadets because of his blue skin and red eyes. Even so, he never retaliated. He only sought to defend himself and protect his friends. Early in his career, whenever he encountered a dumber superior officer, which actually happened a lot, but Thrawn didn't seek to embarrass his commanding officers. Instead, he wanted to help them figure out the solution themselves. A man with Thrawn's intellectual and analytical abilities could utterly destroy other people if he really wanted to. Despite all the discrimination he faced, Thrawn was never really that interested in vengeance. He was way too focused at being the best officer possible. It was character traits like this that made Thrawn such an impressive individual. With a mind like Thrawn, you would think he would never really have to defend himself physically. But just like any great leader, Thrawn occasionally placed himself at the head of an attack. One reason he was able to do this was because he had complete trust in his crew and their ability to command themselves. Another reason was that Thrawn was well versed in martial arts and was constantly honing his skills against incredibly scary looking combat droids in his office. Thrawn was a master of chess hand-to-hand -hand combat which encompassed many different schools of fighting including the Forblian Defense which focused on intercepting and redirecting enemy attacks. Thrawn was unimpressed by the martial arts being taught at the Imperial Academy and found it limiting. He went on to prove that by taking apart his opponents during the sparring sessions with relative ease. Thrawn's allegiance to the Empire was always in question because of his Chiss background. Some doubted that he could be completely loyal to both factions, but Thrawn continued to hold the belief that he could serve both sides simultaneously. He understood that there was the possibility the Empire might one day declare war on the Chiss, but that made him just want to be more a part of the Empire so he could prevent that from happening. But Thrawn didn't believe in a zero-sum game, he saw power in cooperation and mutual gain. While he didn't completely agree with everything the Empire did, he did see it as a stabilizing force in the galaxy. Thrawn wasn't inherently ideologically driven. His analytical mind meant that he looked at everything in a very unbiased way. Despite the rebel so-called moral high ground, Thrawn saw them as a dangerous organization who wanted to destroy the stability in the galaxy and also had no plan on how to replace the government once it was taken down. Combat is extremely unpredictable and Thrawn made sure his crew had every advantage possible. His crew was well trained and independent enough to make important decisions without his oversight. His ability to find out the enemy's weakness meant his crew knew always where to strike. If his team wasn't equipped for the job, he created the right tools for the job. Thrawn is the very embodiment of military efficiency, which is why he is the best officer to ever serve the Empire. So for those of you guys who are interested in learning more about Thrawn, um, as I mentioned before, I'm not a huge fan of how Rebels portray him. Obviously, it's a kid's cartoon, so it's not the deepest series, but Thrawn is kind of portrayed as just an evil, smart villain, which is actually quite far from the truth. I am glad that the Rebels brought Thrawn back into Ken, so it's not a total loss, but if you really want to learn more about Thrawn and see what he's actually like, check out all the Legends books about him by Timothy Zahn, and also check out the new canon Timothy Zahn trilogy. So guys, that is our video about why Thrawn was such an awesome officer. We probably should have done this earlier. As you can tell, I'm a huge Thrawn fan. And guys, if you're a huge Generation Tech fan and you just can't get enough of our content, make sure you check out Generation Films. We upload every other day, so whenever there's no Generation Tech, there's always going to be a Generation Films. So check that out. Uh, we'll link it somewhere, somewhere around here, I think. And also, don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels. Hit that notification button so you don't miss out on all of our awesome content. Thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.